Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about the interview process that is being followed by the Youth Telecom. So one of my good friend has been interviewed uh, recently and he has went through all the rounds and eventually he cleared, got the offer and he is planning to join this organization. So I got all kind of details like what was the process and what was asked in the interviews and how did the HR discussion go. So in this video we are going to talk all about the interview process that is being followed by the Youth Telecom India basically. So before we move on to the video if you are new to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do. Now let's see what we have. So first step is how when how can we apply. So there are few ways that we can do first is going to be uh, wherever you see the job posting for this organization apply there it could be LinkedIn it could be Nokri.com it could be any other platform that you are using right second option is to contact the HR directly so uh, my friend chose this option he uh, he sent a connection to the HR and he directly asked that HR person to uh, schedule the interview and start with the interview process so he just has he just had to give the resume and that is how the interview process started there is this third option also that we can ask for referral but uh, there again you need to know whether there are openings or job posting available then only you can ask for referral or you may have to wait a uh, few days maybe if there is no opening for your profile Right. So I think second option here is the best one because um, contacting the HR directly is going to cut out the middleman and it is going to help you a lot eventually. Now how many rounds were there for this profile? So let me first talk about the profile for which he got interviewed. So the profile is senior software engineer and that is for a Java developer profile. And my friend has around six years of experience working with Java technologies. This is not a full stack role. This is completely backend developer role. So there were four rounds basically, but there could be five rounds. I have seen that there are five rounds for senior software engineer or sen software engineer roles. Uh, here we have four. The fifth one is the online round, the first online round through which they are checking if you have the basic qualifications or not but when he applied through LinkedIn like when he contacted the HR basically that HR person directly scheduled the interview uh, like asking about the availability from both end and then she scheduled the interview basically so there was no online test but there could be uh, depending on the process that is being followed by uh, separate HR or maybe for separate profile so let's talk about rounds now so technical round one so first question that was asked uh, was related to data structure and they can be a question related to DSA and any DSA topic but for him he got this question uh, where he had to print the left view of a tree there was a tree given and he had to print the left view so this was it for DSA and then he got questions related to Java started with a uh, headset internal functionality and custom has that so here the interviewer was uh, looking for if the person knows about the internal functionality like internal data structure that is being used with has set and when he t he uh, told the interviewer about this then he uh, the interviewer asked my friend to write a custom has set so here he was not actually look looking for the entire exact or perfect code he was just looking uh, if he can actually try to find out the logic or maybe some kind of logic to implement custom has set right then uh, there was this question on hash map versus array list so i know these both are different collections but here uh, there's a role like um, the interviewer can ask when to use which which one is more optimized for which operations so there are going to be a lot of questions based on operations and which one is better for which operation right then uh, design patterns so uh, first uh, the question was asked related to uh, what design pattern are you aware about 
then uh, my friend started with factory abstract factory then the interviewer cut in and he asked like that is okay what about other patterns other than singleton abstract factory factory so my friend uh, knew about a lot of patterns like proxy adapter uh, and then we bridge like all sort of stuff when he said adapter the interviewer started with adapter pattern so he had to tell like with a little bit of example like how does adapter pattern work and in which scenario do we have to use adapter pattern then uh, de dependency injection so here there were two questions first is what is dependency injection or why dependency dependency injection is there and how does this work internally like how does this feature allow us to cut out the uh, creation of objects like with spring framework so that was the question then uh, we had uh, like then there was this question on spring mvc uh, where uh, there were three questions first is uh, what uh, what modules are you aware about in spring and what module are you most comfortable with or or mostly used so uh, my friend knew about mvc because he works uh, a lot on mvc not on other modules and i think that that's true uh, other than spring boot we have mostly used spring mvc so uh, when he told about spring mvc then the question started with what is mvc architecture like how do we interact with uh, everything there then um, the question went deep inside uh, like for internal functionality like how does mvc architecture basically communicates or transit request or response or basically everything that a user need to see the information so th that was a big question and then the uh, interview ended with interceptor so here uh, the technical round one got ended and he got the call for technical round two now technical round two was little bit uh, more technical here like uh, it went m uh, in more deep into uh, into depth of every basic knowledge that we have as a developer so we are going to talk about basic topic here and then uh, the interviewer got in deep so let's talk about code java and collection here and multi threading spring so these were the three topics basically that uh, that was asked in this round and depending on these each topic i'm going to differentiate i'm going to put out the questions right because they were a lot and it couldn't be put up in this sheet so let's start with core java and collection so here uh, first the interviewer asked like what collections have you used frequently and what collections are you most comfortable with so uh, he started with uh, array list linked list hash map hash set and then the question was what is the difference between hash set versus array list so here uh, he was not looking much into like order uniqueness he was looking more into like uh, in which scenario should we use hash set or array list because they both uh, insert a data not a key value pair so he wanted to know like when should i use which so that was the big question then uh, the question was how does has set maintain the uniqueness so that went deep into the internal functionality like the round one then uh, collections so here uh, there were a lot of questions based on uh, time complexity so uh, there were few collections uh, based on which he has to uh, tell like whether a uh, get op get operation is going to be good for which collection and insert operation is going to be good for which op which collection then multi threading so uh, the interview started with singleton class so firstly he asked if uh, if my friend knows about singleton class and then uh, how can we create it what is singleton class so uh, there were few steps that he told uh, he d didn't uh, write the code he just told it verbally then the question arises to uh, in singleton if let's say there are five threads and if we are running them concurrently and we want all these five threads to enter a particular critical section so how do we allow that 
so this was a big question because it needs a bit of um, basic understanding of synchronization basically and you don't have to answer it quickly you just have to think first think about ways to do it and then answer so he was looking into uh, a particular solution it it is not like uh, there can be a multiple ways uh, this is up for discussion like whatever you tell that can be uh, yes or no according to the interviewer but he was looking for a particular solution right so this can be asked this is not like a very common question but it's good to know about something uh, new so that was this then uh, executor service so first he was asked whether he knows about this and then uh, there were few questions related to how we can implement this and what is the benefit in which scenario should i use this so and so on and on then uh, this was a big question for multi threading uh, because this went uh, for a longer duration of time so we all know about volatile keyboard but uh, the interviewer went in um, like deep in with jvm so he wanted to ask like how does J jvm knows about volatile how does uh, jvm can tell whether uh, this is going to work like this or not and whether volatile is the only way for a variable to be synchronized um then the uh, con conversation went into atomic integer and uh, whether like uh, we can have counter variable and synchronize it properly properly using volatile keyword so uh, for atomic integer it went like um, uh, how can you implement this uh, how can you increment an integer basically right so that was it for multi threading then spring so first question was how many types of dependency injections are there and which will you use if you have to implement and why so this was again up for discussion like he has to differentiate which can be better for which scenarios it's not like there is going to be a particular dependency injection type which is going to cover all the scenarios in a perfect way right so the second question was how many design patterns are being used by spring internally so there are a lot and i don't think if uh, everyone knows about all of them and where actually are, are they being used so he started with a uh, few and then he ended up with proxy design pattern so uh, template was pretty much easy so he got it covered but uh, with proxy he got a little bit confused because uh, proxy is being used in a particular way in a spring and uh, he didn't know about that much so he started with a little bit of familiarity that he had with proxy design pattern but the interview uh, went in like he was asked to write a custom proxy design pattern and then the question was asked like if you have to design a logging framework uh which can be like um you have to print few particular lines of log before every method execution and then after every method execution so how will you do that then he was asked about transaction transaction uh annotation like how does it work internally so um this was again um up for discussion so he w just wanted to know like if you know when to use this and how does this uh help us basically then uh it went on with aop like advice type of advice so you need to know about advice point card right so these these uh very important uh terminologies that are being used in aop that you have to be familiar with so this was it for spring then we had a uh, managerial round so uh this is i think pretty much common in all the organization like um, there are few questions that are being asked in every managerial round like uh, what's your project how long have you been working on what is the tax tax stuff like that so uh, same thing was asked here like uh, he had to tell about the architecture and the uh, question arises like how does the data flow so uh, in his correct current project he is working on a microservice architecture so he was asked like how many databases are you being are you using in your current project and is it better to use multiple databases or not and how does the communication works between multiple microservices so on on and on. so on and on then the tech stack so he was using apache uh, kafka 
सो देन दी क्वेश्चन सराइज इज अबाउट अपाचे काफ का वेदर इट इज़ गुड फ्रेमवर्क इन कंपेरिज इन कंपेरिजन टू रेबिट एम क्यू और एनी क्यू फ्रेमवर्क देन देर वॉज दिस क्वेश्चन ऑन सिस्टम डिज़ाइन सो लिफ्ट सर्विस सो हेयर ही वॉज आज लाइक लेट से इफ देर आर इफ यू हैव टू डिज़ाइन अ पर्टिकुलर फ्रेमवर्क बेसिकली विच कैन टेल वेदर द लिफ्ट डोर्स आर ओपन एंड क्लोज and like there can be few uh, operations that can be handled like if the uh, if the lift is uh, going up up and down then the doors cannot be open or closed right it has to be stopped and then only the door can be open or closed so you have to maintain states of these uh, like this lift service and you have to design a framework uh, using interfaces and then you have to override these interfaces and um, like check whether the states are valid or not for each operation and after these states validation you have to tell uh, whether the operations that uh, an user can do are those valid or not if they are valid then proceed with it right so he has to implement a lot of methods so again uh, this is not uh, a common question so you have to think about it Uh, a bit like which collection or data structure you have to use and uh, what is a good way according to you so th- this is again up for discussion it is not like this going to be a perfect solution it depends on your interviewer basically if he is agrees with it that's good otherwise it's a no big no right so then the question was um, why are you leaving your current organization so this is again up for debate uh, so he told about his problems or why he is looking for a change and that was it then uh, he got the call from hr uh, actually the next day he got the call and uh, there uh, the question was like uh, uh, th- this was not basically a question it was like feedback from all the interviews like um, cumulatively what he went through and what was the feedback like like including managerial round and then there was a few questions like uh, what is a notice period if there is any buyout option in your uh, offer is there anything that your company follows stuff like that how soon uh, can he join so he was also asked like can he actually uh, reduce his notice period a bit because they were in a hurry to uh, to fill that position and then uh, the hr sent a formal email with congratulations and they were uh request for a uh, salary slip or id proofs to move on and give out the formal offer letter so this was it uh in terms of everything he went through uh, for the interview process uh if you have any questions about this do let me know on the comment section i will try to help as much as I, as much as i can and this is it for this video i hope i will meet you again in some another video till then have a good day stay safe and bye bye